Hey guys, David Tao from barbend.com. Today we're talking about CrossFit Open Workout 20.1. It was announced on Thursday, and we're gonna be rounding up some of our favorite tips from top athletes and coaches in the CrossFit world, as well as providing a little insight from here in the Barbend office. Let's get to it. So, the workout 20.1, it is 10 rounds for time of eight ground overhead, that's at 95 pounds for the men, 65 pounds for the women, and then 10 bar facing burpees. There is a 15 minute time cap, so for a lot of folks working out at home, this is actually gonna be more of an AMRAP style workout, and they are going to come up against that time cap. So the best way to learn about open workouts when they're announced is often at the launch parties. This time, it was Rich Froning and Scott Panchik throwing down in Austin, Texas. Both athletes went sub 10, so that's kind of a good barometer for those very elite athletes. Under 10 minutes is a decent starting point for athletes who were trying this out for the very first time. Scott Panchik actually edged out Rich Froning by a few seconds, which is not a huge surprise, noting that Panchik is well known for his capacity and speed on the burpees. All right, those ground to overheads, as they're called. For the elite athletes, many of them are just gonna perform snatches throughout. Power snatches will be fastest throughout. But for a lot of folks at home, for folks who maybe are worried about that time cap or their muscular endurance, clean and jerks might be the way to go on this. They're going to be a little bit slower, you're not gonna be able to cycle them as fast, but they're gonna be able to keep your heart rate down a little lower relative to the snatches, at least for most people. And they're also gonna give your shoulders and upper back a little bit more of a rest. This is a workout I would definitely not suggest going into cold. If you don't have a decent warm up, if your heart rate isn't already a little elevated going into this workout, you're going to feel like you hit a brick wall in rounds three and four. I can absolutely guarantee you that. If you want some more specific warm up routines that are focused on getting you prepped for this workout, I definitely recommend checking out at least two resources. One is Brute Strength, they produce great stuff around every open workout, and the other is my man Cole Sager, who has a YouTube channel that's growing where he produces a ton of good content. He's also got a really good warm up routine that I think is going to help a lot of people with 20.1. And by the way, if you're interested in more from Cole Sager, check out the Barbend podcast. We interviewed him recently. It was a really enlightening conversation. Pacing, let's talk about pacing. As Cole Sager might say, and he does in his 20.1 prep video, smooth is fast. Try not to come out of the gate too quickly. Try and keep from turning on those afterburners until about halfway through the workout. Rounds four, five, maybe even six for some of us at home. Keep those barbell movements smooth and consistent. This is a sweaty one. We are all going to be puddles of sweat at the end of this, and that can impact your grip. How often should you chalk up? We saw the athletes play around with that a little bit in the open workout announcement. Should you wear sweatbands? Is tape going to be a factor? Brute Strength has some really good specific tips on that about a minute into their 20.1 open prep workout. So if you're worried about grip, if this weight might be a little bit more intimidating for you or something where you know you're gonna start losing your grip when you get to those high reps, definitely check out their video and prepare for sweat. I'm going to be honest with you folks. This is a burpee workout. This is not a snatch workout. This is not a clean and jerk workout. The majority of your time is going to be spent doing the burpees. Now, if you're trying to figure out how to pace those burpees, there are a lot of different suggestions out there. Some people like to use a metronome. Some people like to have uh, a counter kind of going off in their head. Cole Sager has some really good tips and a very good strategy that I think is actually the best I've heard for this particular workout, about three minutes and 29 seconds into his 20.1 open prep video. And again, that's linked in the description below. All right, a bit of a controversial opinion, so take this one with a grain of salt. I think it's okay to take a couple of breaths and pause at the bottom of a burpee if you need it. I'd much rather see athletes take a breath or two down here than stand over the barbell with their hands on their knees gasping for breath. That's a great way to waste a bunch of time. So in those later rounds of the rounds of 10, if you need to take two or three breaths down here at the bottom of a burpee, say when you're on burpee seven or eight of 10 in one of those rounds, I actually think that's okay. Again, a lot of people have different opinions on that. That's something I found useful, and I'd much rather see athletes take a quick second down here than stand over the barbell, leaning over, breathing heavily, because that always wastes more time than you think. And just to clarify, this is specified in CrossFit's official movement standards for this workout. 
you can step back and step forward on the bar facing burpees. You have to have that two foot takeoff and landing when you're jumping over the barbell. We're not trying to skimp any reps there, but you can step back and step up. For a lot of people, that stepping strategy is going to save them energy throughout this workout. And I would definitely recommend if you're trying to play with that or thinking about whether or not you should do it, do it from the beginning, rounds one all the way through 10. Now this is probably a workout many people can do twice before scores are due. I don't know if I'd recommend that. This is pretty toasty, you're definitely gonna feel it, but a lot of folks can try this, be fully recovered, and give it another full go before they have to submit those scores. But if you wanna try and avoid that, and you're still wondering whether you should do snatches or clean and jerks, and by the way, you can switch mid-workout if you want. The standard's just ground to overhead. Try this. Do a nice warm up when you're in the gym, then, Take a bit of rest, maybe five minutes after your warm up, and then try three rounds of the workout, of the ground to overhead, and then the burpees with snatches. You don't have to do that third set of burpees, and see how you feel. So you're trying basically two and a half full rounds of this, three full rounds of the snatches. See how you feel, assess your grip, see if you're having to break it up. Then take a full rest, we're talking 20, 25 minutes, maybe do another light warm up, and then try the same thing, two and a half rounds with the clean and jerks and see how you feel. You can even come in the next day and try that little miniature version of the workout with the clean and jerks. That's going to start giving you a bit of a personal assessment as to how your grip is going to hold up and how your upper back and shoulders are gonna feel after some reps of those movements. And that might give you a little insight into whether you should try the snatches or just move on to the clean and jerks. I would definitely recommend checking out CrossFit Invictus's video with Burn Prince and Justin Wright. They have some fantastic tips for pacing from round to round and looking at this workout in the macro scale. And I gotta say, I've worked with Justin a little bit in the past. He's one of the most analytical athletes I've ever had the pleasure of interacting with. So if you're someone who's really, really big on breaking things down to the numbers, Justin's take is one you won't wanna miss. We've linked to that video in the description below. This workout is spicy. Whether you're an athlete like Rich Froning and Scott Panchik trying to finish under 10 minutes, or just someone maybe treating this more as an AMREP, trying to get as many rounds as possible under that 15 minute time cap, you're going to feel it. We're all going to be in the pain cave together. If you wanna go into more specifics on warm ups or movement strategies on snatches versus clean and jerks, there are a lot of great resources out there. We've linked some in the description and used some as cards in this video. Brute Strength, CrossFit Invictus, Cole Sager, Jacob Hepner, the list goes on and on. We've highlighted just some of our favorites. We're really excited to tackle 20.1 here at Barbend, and we hope you are too. Let us know how you did in the comments below this video, and make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.